Good. What, afternoon? Wow. Anyway, I've been having a pretty good time with World of Horror, and I unlocked a couple achievements, and I think I understand how the game feels and works now. I've gotten better, I've gotten stronger, I feel better. I still play the game on easy mode because I, I I'm I'm a baby. But I, I feel I feel more better. And with that, I'm going to try to beat the game by focusing solely on strength, because I just want to hit the shit out of everything. Which is gonna be hard, but I wanna get better at it. The downside to getting better at the game is now I think it's less scary. Which is an, an inevitable consequence of stuff like that. So, I'm gonna do a vote. So, I'm gonna do a quick, quick vote. I'll read everything so that we can always keep the... Because I don't really mind. I'll, I'll keep the spookiness factor up and all that shit. That's okay. Or, if I've read it already, we can just skip it. If I've already read it, then it'll make things a little easier. I don't know what to tell you, Media Ghost. You should have just not read it at all. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday. Once I've had my fill of World of Horror, or the game, you know, spits in my face enough, I'll move on to some Dark Tide or something along those lines. If people want to see Dark Tide. I also have uh, comfy games I can play. Um, take a break from Anvil Saga. I'm not going to speed run all of this, but I am going to not, you know, I'm not going to do everything. Another boy from your school has disappeared. Rumor has it a terrible woman has returned from the grave. A woman with the whitest smile and the sharpest scissors. You knew your friend was up to something when he left you his notebook full of cryptic notes. I can send her back where she belongs, he claimed. After he, too, disappeared, you decided to study the notebook for clues. 
It details a ritual that claims to stop the wicked woman once and for all. That's the worst thing that could happen. Your missing friend has left you a notebook. If the rumors are true, to stop the tall woman with scissors, you'll need to perform a ritual to force her material form to appear in our dimension. Accomplishing this requires first the drawing of an eldritch sim sigil, then the lighting of holy candles. You can only hope your friend has left you some left them somewhere near the school. Dichromatic, you need a thunder hammer with uh you I don't even know if you can backstab the uh insta kill bosses anymore with Shroudfield, I think they may have nerfed that. You feel like something horrible is happening within the school. You find an old trophy case set in a seemingly abandoned corridor. Everything inside is covered in a thick layer of dust. Got the sports rifle. Found an additional page from your friend's diary. It seems that the blessed chalk was left on the floor. Something's wrong. Instead of a clear blue sky, you see the bloated corpse of a long forgotten deity looming over the school's roof. The barrier between worlds is coming apart. You must hurry or risk being noticed by whatever other elder tours still lurk here. You raise your head in time to see Yalazeth's single eye glaring down at you. You scream as your mind is flooded with forbidden knowledge and your skin is etched with ancient runes and curses. Casting spells raises doom. I have no intention of casting any spells. Gain 20 XP though, which is nice. You found Blessed Chalk, which you can use to draw the sigil in your ritual. You copy the sigil as best you can on the blackboard. Hopefully it'll be enough. You enter the kitchen. Even though it's abandoned and the lights are off, something is cooking in the large pot. You find a first aid kit next to the storage cabinet. You quickly bandage yourself and leave the kitchen. The sound of scissors is getting louder. You must hurry. It's a bad time to be out of cash, says the grim-looking man who's standing in your way. Our company, fortunately, specializes in cases like yours and will gradually help you get back on track after all. He takes a step closer. You could swear there is a faint smell of rust around the man. Everyone has something to sell. You startle awake on a park bench. Did you faint? There's no sign of the grim man anywhere, but you find an envelope full of cash inside your pocket. You found the holy candles in your friend's backpack. You lit them as instructed by the notebook. Everything is ready for the ritual. Hey, what's that? You take a step back as the writhing amorphous mass slowly takes shape. Soon it all becomes a tall, woman-like creature with three faces, all connected by a wide smile. Now it's your chance to fight and defeat the horror. It is also your only chance.
twisted and twitching, the demon woman enters the classroom, cackling menacingly. Am I beautiful? <laughs> Wait, no, just... Am I beautiful to you? Hey, forget about it! Hey. Gun! Gun! Simply gun! The ancient horror lies dead on the classroom floor, slowly dissolving into nothingness. You find your friend gravely wounded, but alive. You help him up, and both of you limp away from the school as the police sirens get louder. Ending A. Scissors Woman is gone for good. Or is she? You shudder, knowing the urban legend will inspire another kid in another city to try and summon the eldritch being. Ending A. Roads leading out of town were closed by the police. Now costs more doom to travel outside of town. I might not be able to do this one if I don't get enough money. On the first anniversary of your friend's disappearance, a suspicious man has started asking questions. He claims to be a private investigator hired by the parents of the students. Except the parents of your friends didn't hire him. Who is he and what did the students discover? Three students disappeared in the process of making a documentary about the local folklore. Maybe you'll find a clue about their last known whereabouts in the school newspaper. The round window of the crooked manor tower is calling you. You feel your strength drain away. Nice. There's a local legend about a heartbroken seamstress. One stormy night, she broke into a local inn and stitched the unsuspecting guests together. Her final gruesome artwork. That's just a legend, right? <laughs> Perception check success. On the sewing machine, you spot a strange engraving. When you get closer to investigate, your mind is flooded with forbidden knowledge. You leave the room quickly. The legend says the witch has, was buried alive for kidnapping and murdering two children. It points you in a specific direction, potentially saving you some time. Possible angles and seemingly moving lines make your head spin. This is possible. The notes mention a village not far from your town. You decide to take a bus. Getting closer, you can't help but notice a large number of trees that have suddenly died. What's happening? Oh, I unlocked the illegal den. I forgot about that. There we go. Oh, I thought they bought these. Okay, never mind. Ooh, the cleaver!
That was really, really useful, actually. I thought they could have bought that, but they didn't. So I got the can of acid, meat cleaver. The cleaver is ridiculously good. This is good. Suddenly, an empty bottle smashes on the wall behind you. You cover yourself from the glass fragments and notice a masked assailant holding a baseball bat. It's a woman! Wait, what's that? Prescription? Okay, there's... Oh, I don't have any money. Okay, um... Okay, there's something that I can do with that prescription, I know. I know that if I go to the, the, the hospital, to the pharmacy, I need four funds and I can fill that prescription and get expensive medicine. Then I can take it to the illegal den and I can get something out of that, but I don't... I don't have enough money. So I'm probably just gonna have to... Do I still have the police station? I do. Okay. Everyone in the village is unsettingly friendly. An old farmer points you to an old stone. The missing group supposedly started their forest trip there. I'll just rest real quick. Walking through the village, you're suddenly pulled behind a building. Two menacing-looking masked figures block your escape. Do you serve the old ones? Yes. We knew it! The prophecies were true! The masked figures relax a bit, taking off their masks. We apologize for this, Master. Two free allies. Plus one to weapon damage. Your kick action deals an additional one damage. Seven Doom is a lot, though. You have a feeling that you're being watched, and you hear a branch snap, and you quickly turn around. There's someone standing in the trees. Park Ranger tells you to hide as she raises her rifle and goes to confront the person. After a while, you peek out from behind a tree. The only thing left is a rifle on the ground. Both Ryu Ryoko, Ryoko and the Ranger are missing. That sucks. Now I just got this bitch. I got a rifle, but I have no bullets for it. Guns in this game are not as overpowered as you might think. The trees overhead block the sunlight and you begin to feel gloomy. You have a feeling someone is following you. Walking through the woods, you discover a sweater. It's torn apart and covered in blood, but where's the owner? A wild beast must have killed this poor person. You say a quick prayer before continuing. You discover a giant plush toy half buried in a ditch. Feeling uneasy, you take a step back, but it's already too late. Meh. Get fucked! You have a feeling someone's watching you. Following a trail of rotten fruit, you stumble upon a small forest shrine. It's probably dedicated to some local spirit. DESTROY! You topple the evil-looking statue and discover a bundle of money. Nice. The suspicious group you've been following is gathered in a nearby forest. They're enacting some sort of ritual in a clearing up ahead. The only nearby vantage point is a large rock. Strength check success. You manage to see some of the faces and hear the names of the group.
What you thought was just a discarded pile of clothes suddenly moves. As it stands up, a cloud of white powder is released into the air. Yeah, I missed. Get fucked. In the basement, how the rumored witch house seems empty. In the basement, however, you find a camera pointed at the large hole in the ground. On the table next to the camera, you see three cassettes, each titled after one of the missing friends. Then you hear a curious sound coming from the hole. You kneel down and lean forward to see what's inside the hole. It takes a while to process what you're looking at. It's a giant eye staring right at you. Hypnotized, you continue to lean in, feeling weaker and weaker as the gargantuan beast lures you in. Poor acid! You open the can of acid and empty its contents in the well. The house's foundation shakes as the massive creature's eye burns. Walls begin to collapse as you pass out from the toxic fumes. You wake up later with the cassettes in your trembling hand. The witch's house is nowhere to be seen. Ending A. It wrong, sulfuric acid! I never found out how to fix these. I'll have to figure it out. <laughs> the old god stirs. The friendly dog disappeared last night. You'll have to find a new place to buy equipment. Core strength, baby! Plus another strength. One more. We're good. Beckoning Bulletin. As the decades roll on, technology has only developed further. These days, computer bulletin board software allows computers to communicate over phone lines. All it takes is a computer and a modem, and anybody can connect to a bulletin system, or even host one of their own. Once you connect, you can read all of the messages on that bulletin, and even post your own to start a conversation. Many use them to share files or to chat about their favorite topics. Everything from video games to sports, even to idol culture. But in the wake of a sudden string of weird suicides, things aren't all fun and games. Rumors have surfaced that the deaths are linked to a bulletin system operated from somewhere within Shiokawa. What's behind the suicides? How could so many people all be driven to take their own lives? Even if the rumored bulletin system's phone number is found, there's no hope to investigate without a computer that can connect to it. Maybe the school library has one that works? I've never been to the witch's tree. Wish granting tree. Exchange a curse for various bonuses. That's not worth it. Drooping tree branches hang over the path, framing it in an almost macabre way. It's almost inspiring. You get completely lost in your thoughts. You wander around the woods for a long time, but you're sure you have some new leads in your investigation. There we go, four funds. Pharmacy. Fill a prescription. Boom. Did I do it right? My funds are missing. Entering the illegal den, you instantly recognize the girl who attacked you and dropped the prescription. You throw the expensive medicine on the table before getting closer. Is, is that the drug for my grandma? Her eyes light up. I thought it was gone forever. Why would you help me at all? Name's Miku, by the way. New achievement unlocked.
Even if the rumored bulletin system's phone number is found, there's no hope to investigate without a computer. Failed knowledge check. Hearing footsteps behind you, you realize you aren't the only student here. A girl wearing a demon mask starts giggling as she gets closer. Fucked. Box cutter. I could throw it at something. While the school's library computer doesn't have a modem, you happen to bump into a member of the computer club while asking around. She apparently just got a new system and is willing to let you borrow hers. Thanking her, you arrange to meet at her home in the city. Dark forces scheme against you. Someone is following you, human enemies get more powerful, and the effect stacks. You lug the cardboard box full of PC parts up to your apartment. Stairs. Your apartment stairs. Teeth clenched as you heave it up one step, step at a time. God damn, computers are heavy. It's a bad time to be out of cash. You wipe the sweat from your brow as you finally finish setting up the computer in your bedroom. After a few tests, you're now certain that everything is functional. A newscaster on the TV says that the suicide rate is still climbing. Worse, the morbid trend is beginning to catch on in nearby towns. You've got to be fast. Mr. Ooh, your neighbor is a horror manga artist. He's struggling to come up with a satisfying ending for his newest story. Incredible! He shouts in excitement. How do you come up with this stuff? Sensing this story will be a huge hit, he pays you a token of appreciation. Hoping to find a lead, you head to the hospital. With how many deaths there have been, the hospital's in chaos. The staff look exhausted. When the receptionist lets her head down onto the lets her head down on the desk for a minute, you slip out of the waiting room and on into the hospital corridors. A pale woman wearing a nurse outfit stops you. Today we're running a blood drive to help those in need. You look healthy. Would you be so kind to help the community? Luck check success. You feel like they took more blood than they should. You feel weak but fulfilled knowing you're helping. You overhear two nurses talking about a girl whose suicide attempt failed. Apparently, she's recovering at her grandparents' house at the village in the city outskirts. You exit the hospital and make your way to the nearest bus stop. It's getting dark as you arrive at the cemetery, and shadows move in fantastic and unaccountable ways between the tombstones. Finding the right grave may prove to be a challenge, especially when you feel someone's gaze at your back. Failed Charisma Check As you pull into the village bus stop, the news story comes on the dr bus driver's radio. An entire class of Shiokawa students leapt out in front of a train, hand in hand. You move urgently as you exit the bus and begin searching down the village streets. A friend returning from a trip to Africa has invited you to, differ to dinner. This time, they've outdone themselves. This is a real feast, full of exotic meats. It's getting late and you can't stay for long, but the host asks if you want to take anything home with you. Of course I have enough bottles to last a whole year, your friend says, handing you a bottle. When you find the girl's house, her grandparents greet you solemnly. They thank you for your efforts to stop the deaths. Forgive her, her grandfather says as he leads you to her bedroom. She's a kind girl. Just something's happened to her. In an otherwise bleak village, the look of the most beautiful flower patch surprises you. As you get closer to compliment the gardener, you stop, hearing weird sniffling sounds. 
Wait, what's that? A shovel. That would have been useful earlier. The recovering girl is more than happy to not only confirm the bulletin's existence, but to give you its number. You have to do what it tells you. Trust me, you won't regret a thing. She beams at you as her grandmother struggles to make her swallow the pain medication. I'll be back to join you all soon. Wait for me, okay? Disquieted, you give the grandparents your phone number and hastily leave. Really strong hitting weapon, but it's no meat cleaver. An old priest is performing a ritual to appease the local demon imprisoned underground. You're invited to join them. Old man frowns and walks away. As soon as you arrive home, that you dial the number and put the handset onto a modem. Your heart pounds as the computer fans exhale. The system hums. You hear a brief dial tone, then it finally connects. Welcome home! Did you like it so far? I'm glad. Take your modem off the phone and put it to your ear. You recall the note you found? Could this be the voice of humanity you read about? Bracing yourself, you slowly put the phone to your ear. You don't hear words or a voice. You soon understand they don't need those. It's difficult, but you manage to keep track of which thoughts are yours and which are theirs. Everyone is here now. We've escaped everything that held us back in life. We don't have any more burdens. You can escape with us. This is the purest form of existence. A paradise of connection. Everyone deserves that. We will bring all of humanity together. Er, er. You explain the imminent arrival of the old god. With its limitations, the bulletin could that never have hoped to gather humanity in time. Are you fucking insane? Thanks, Steven. That was nice of you. Not to mention how many people that are unable to access a computer. As it is, insane? convincing all of humanity to die is impossible. Oh, then we'll that have to wait. Beans. It's disappointing, but that's all right. Da -da -da -da. When computers advance, and everyone can be connected, did, did, did. we'll come back for you. It's a promise, okay? I was eating those beans. Are you fucking insane? The noise on the other end of the line suddenly cuts out completely. Still reeling from the mental assault, you find yourself staggering towards the futon. You collapse into it, and sleep soon takes you. You're awakened by the sound of the phone ringing. After what just happened, you hesitate to answer. You warily grab the handset. When you put the phone to your ear, you hear the trembling voice of the girl you met in the village. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. It was in my head and I, I nearly... She bursts into tears, thanking you over and over. You smile relieved. You later learn that the suicides have come to a sudden and complete halt. But even still, its promise lingers in your mind. How long do you have until it comes back for you? You smother the knot. The thought. For now, it's finished. Ending A. People are stocking up on everything, making it harder for you to get what you want.
out of all these cases, which genuinely freaked me out. Uh, the botanist. The mermaids. Really, all of them are pretty rough. How do you get over your fear of cat claws? It's just a phobia. They don't hurt that much. Don't worry. You'll be fine. How often do runs lose out of dying when Doom hits 100? Dude, I was on the second to last level of the lighthouse and my Doom maxed out. You finally made it inside the cursed lighthouse. Your gut's telling you two things. Whoever or whatever's behind the weird events must be on the highest floor of this place. That you should run away as far and as fast as you can. You're afraid there won't be a way back once you start climbing these stairs. I don't have a flashlight. Shit. Following the winding staircase, you find a metal gate that blocks your way. It's locked, but you notice an electrical cable. It seems to connect the door to the hole inside the central pillar. If there's a switch inside, you'll have to risk getting cut by numerous glass shards and knives. Not enough dexterity. You can feel a sharp glass ripping your flesh as you search for the switch. Finally, you grab a cable and follow it with your bleeding fingers, until you find the button. With a buzz, the gate opens. Climbing up the winding staircase, you have stopped by a masked man wearing an expensive suit. The rules have changed, kiddo, he says, taking the jacket and the mask off. Nothing personal, really. You've defeated Takashi-san. Following the winding staircase, you're stopped by a metal gate. The tiny page nailed to the gate explains that opening the gate will require you to grab two metal rods. Using your own body as a natural conductor, you will power up the gate. Not enough knowledge. You grab the rods, electricity flowing through your body and burning the nerve endings. The pain is almost unbearable, but with a buzz, the gate opens. Following the winding staircase, you're- wait a minute. Someone's been taking photos focused on you. The photos include the enemies you fought with. There's something wrong, but you can't precisely say. Select the second enemy I fought this run. Hmm. No, you guys weren't here. You guys weren't here when I did this. You, There's literally no way chat can help me with this. It's either Rioter or Gigolo. Wait, no. I fought the Gigolo. And then I... Yes! It was the Scissor Woman. You rip the photo. Underneath it is a tiny button. You press it. With a buzz, the gate opens. Here we go, I don't have a flashlight. You decide to brave the veil. You finally emerge a while... ...a while later. Safe, though you can't, however, explain the blasphemous whispers you heard. A dark cloud swirl around the lighthouse. Did you arrive too late? As the fog, as the unnaturally fog, as the unnatural fog slowly lifts, you are un, you are relieved and collapse on the floor. The next day, everything feels like a bad dream. You've managed to stop the ritual awakening of the old eldritch god. But what's done is done. It will stir in its slumber again and again until the stars are right again. 
Congratulations. On the easiest difficulty with the best melee weapon, we surpassed a strength build. And I got six achievements somehow. Yakuza sweep! Also, I did the challenge thing. I did that a while ago, I think. Now I'm going to move on from skeptic to initiate. I'm going to do these one at a time. Oh, I unlocked a handful of new people. Oh. Uh, I wonder what her story is. Miku, a rebellious misfit seen on spreading chaos. She will protect her hometown, even if only her own selfish reasons. Increasing doom grants various bonuses. I also got this guy on my own time, and I want to say, holy shit, what a stupid fucking thing. What? When did I unlock this girl? Something terrible is stalking Jury. And with each passing day, its presence is getting nearer and nearer. Starts with a family curse. Hi. Oh yeah, this is Yumiko. I unlocked her earlier today. I know their secret! I know their secret! This is actually a good person to do a strength Chad build with. Wait, should we do should we do a Chad strength build with uh with uh Should I do a strength build with John Faith? Actually, wait, Haru might be the best one to do that. But he's got to deal with cigarettes, which is a problem. All right, here. That's what we'll do. We'll do it. We'll do a strength build. There we go. On to initiate. Slithering through the twisted tapestry of dimensions, the festering servants of Ezal latch onto new vessels, ravenously devouring the very essence of human suffering. Swelling their grotesque forms, slowly but inevitably, the hosts succumb. Their bodies and minds become one with the burgeoning god. Each mystery, a new status, will start to weigh you down. If we're doing a strength build, we should do as much damage as we can. I know I can increase my faith. But I really don't want to take the faith hit. You know what, I'll do it one time. why you'd ever want to lower your faith. I don't think you get any benefits if your faith is super low. Alright, so this is the part where I'm going to re-roll a couple of these. The two things that I want the most is I know where to get a guaranteed strength weapon that's actually pretty decent. I can either... 
investigate the apartments a shit ton and be lucky enough or unlucky enough to encounter the um ba -ba 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 -ba. the stalker which will give me a baseball bat or I can go do the scissors after I do um the scissors after I do the hands which will give me the gun. Wordless ward? I've never done that one. Evolving eels would be really good. Ever beaten something truly evil? You can't. Peculiar painting, huh? Morbid mermaids. Never completed that. That would be really good if I could get... Um, his fire axe. Apparently there's a way to get his fire axe. to beat him. That's like the only way. But I need to be able to get a weapon that can actually deal with that. Yeah, you're, you're not supposed to be able to kill something truly evil. These are not good. Like, if I could get the Morbid Mermaids, that would be pretty great. But as of right now, that's not really a good idea. Arms. I need arms and school. Whatever comes after that is meaningless. Brightening Flood. There's Morbid Mermaids. If I could get- so there's three things that I want, and it would be literally impossible to get them without being the luckiest person on planet Earth. I would have to- here's the three that I want. I need the arms for the tiny key. I need the school scissors for the baseball bat. And then I need the eels for the minus one damage from Kana. If I can get that, that would make me really, really strong and have a great chance. But I would need three out of five, and that's... That's rough. There's scissors. Oh, we got eels, we got scissors. Do we have arms? Nope, no arms. The key would give me the gun to make the scissors encounter a fucking joke. Um... The scissors also comes with a baseball bat, which guarantees me a, a, a strength-based melee weapon. Eels guarantees me the best ally in the game. Spoilers to tell me how to get the axe and mermaids. I think I just need to kill the guy, and he will drop the fire axe. The thing is, is that he's a really tough fight, and that it's not easy to do. So I would need to do everything and then this last, which would make the fight not that useful. So what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna do Evolving Eels. Get that out of the way. Sleeping on my boy, Student F! Eerie episode of Evolving Eels. While returning to your home, some, suddenly someone bumps into you. Did you know? You turn around. It's your friend living in the same apartment complex, Kana. That weird dude is back. You know the guy who studies fish? You shrug, opening the door. Kana follows and immediately enters the kitchen. A while later, she returns with two cans of soda. Aren't you curious? What weird fish did he bring this time? And she grins. I saw the creepy neighbor carrying some jars inside his apartment. 
I wonder what weird fish did he find? Will you check it out? He'll surely recognize me if I try to do it myself. Please? You rummage through your belongings, trying to find anything that helps you. You pick up marked Bible. Hopefully it'll be enough. While in inventory, resting regains extra reason and stamina, depending on the character's faith. You don't remember certain parts of it. Is this real? Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I like I like the shovel, but man is it slow. Is the crowbar truly worth it? I mean, you know what? We're going full strength, Chad. Shovel it is. Flashlight. All right, I'm going to try one more time and talk to the dog. The dog treats are nice, but I already have too much shit in my inventory. I really want the compass. I'm gonna reroll this one more time. Nope. It's not worth it to do anything else. Luck check success. You managed to catch a glimpse of an officer. He holds a glowing rock in his hand before packing it inside a bag. Could it be a meteorite the TV reporter talked about? Yeah, that that's a real shop in um, Tokyo. It's a, it's a Shiba Inu runs that shop or something. Or well, I don't know if it's a very good shop. Roger's golden turd. Um, I'm a little hungry. Give me like two seconds. What should I have for lunch? I think I should get like... Man, dude, chicken is awesome. Can we just talk about chicken real quick? Mmm, so damn expensive. Alt tab and get something to eat. I, you, you're not tricking me, motherfucker. I know all about your little... games. Ooh, Chick-fil-A sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna order what I had yesterday.
All right, all done. Do you ever have a like an unreasonable thought that might actually be true and you're like shit um uh I don't trust Black Friday sales you know I I don't trust Black Friday sales I don't think that Black Friday is actually in my best interest. I think that Black Friday sales are, this item was $10, so we're gonna put a sticker on it that says it was $12 and then sell it at 10. So there's a part of me that's like, I see the price and knowing me and my, my disposable income that I never spend, I'm like, I could really let loose and buy something nice, but there's no way to tell if it's actually a sale or if it's a scam. Whoa, racist Jay back at it again. Practice is illegal in a lot of places. It's illegal all over the United States and happens all the time. Knowledge failure? Seriously, you had to roll a 12? Jesus. Cool it with the anti-Semitism. Whoa, cool anti-Semitism. Neighbor's office at school is empty. You do find a few jars, all filled with weird eel-like fish. Despite your protest, Kana decides to take one jar home. Passing by a faulty elevator, the doors suddenly open. You take a step back, noticing a weird tall woman standing in the darkness. Do you live here? I've never seen you. Time for Father Strength to really kick it up a nut. Wham! Wham! Shovel does six damage, that bad boy did ten! Look at him! Wandering through an empty corridor, you find an old vending machine. You don't recognize the brands of sodas inside, but you can really use a drink. A little odd, but you enjoy the drink. Kana was right. Someone tried to burn some papers. They must have been in a hurry because some of the papers look salvageable. You both return to your apartment and try to decipher the notes. Dark forces scheme against you. You don't know who you can trust anymore. Plus one damage. Receive additional combat damage. If I get rid of this... Oh, I deal more damage, but take more damage. Kana will counteract that. Success dexterity check. Inside the man's pocket, you find documents. They're all strangely dry. Did the man really drown, or was he brought here? Think of how stupid it is for Kana to try to break into your neighbor's apartment. You go to sleep. Spend the entire day waiting for Kano. Where the hell is she? Corridors flooded by a black sludge. Slowly oozing from underneath the door of chemistry. In the door of the chemistry classroom, a damp, moldy stench grows as you get closer. How are you going to get to the other side? I'll take a detour. Better safe than sorry. Khan has been missing since yesterday. You decide to check out the neighbor's apartment yourself. You 
cautiously enter your neighbor's kitchen. You're shocked to see the countless jars filled with eels, flailing around relentlessly. Where the hell is Kana? Okay! Oh. Excuse me. <gasps> baby Tyrion! How did this happen? Whoop! Hey, baby. Oh, you have an eye booger. Hey, baby. Check your ears. You got something in your ears this time? Are you just a little baby? You good, baby? Yeah, I don't, f I don't feel anything. You good? Huh. Oh, someone just woke up from a nap. He's all tired. What's wrong, baby? I found the neighbor, but when his eye burst, I slipped on the blood and lost consciousness. I'm afraid there's something in my own eye, too. All right, if you are squeamish, look away in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Shocked, you see countless tiny eels crawling out of your friend's eye in all directions. Will Kana even survive the blood loss? You can look back now. You rush to the hospital with Kana, getting a lot of attention from horrified people. Your friend is taken immediately to the operating theater, and you collapse on a chair in the waiting area. Wake up, dude. You've been sleeping for three hours. You groggily open your eyes to see your friend Kana is wearing an eye patch. Not so pretty anymore, huh? Thank you for saving my life. You're still processing the events of the previous night. Corpse-eating eels that lay their eggs in eyeballs. Sitting with your friend Kana before the apartment building, you watch the police officers emptying out your neighbor's place. Ending A. Old Town stopped receiving an outside signal. Letting allies go grants a permanent bonus to one of your stats. Throwing items during combat counters is more effective. Allows switching of equipment during combat encounters. Strength! Okay, all three of these, except this one, have to do with a, a forced combat encounter. This one will be pretty easy to get uh, what I want out of it. Hi, baby Tyrion. You want your bottom scratched? You want your bottom? You scratch your bottom? Baby. The Moonlight Sailors will be a little easier to deal with. It began with one fisherman who dragged something truly awful from the belly of the ocean. A dark, writhing ooze that memorized him beyond control. He hid himself away for a week, adoring it, not to be seen until one moonlit night, when a young girl spotted his boat drifting away. A single lantern swinging at the helm and the captivated fisherman singing eerily to its catch. Oh, that was a- that was bad.
<laughs> yes, my boy, student F right there. Although you braved the stench for hours, you gleam nothing besides the fact the fisherman had a wife. Perhaps you should pay her a visit. Suddenly, an empty bottle smashes on the wall behind you. You cover yourself from glass fragments and notice a masked assailant holding a baseball bat. I was going to see if I could get something to discard during that fight, but... No. You enter a room full of wooden statues. You're amazed by how realistic some of them look. So realistic, in fact. You could have sworn one of them blinked. Vampire! Seriously, I can dodge? Nice! So anyway... <laughs> Fuck him. Find a huge pile of nets and hooks prepared for the big hunt. You quickly throw them into the ocean. Maybe that'll stop them from sailing out. Surely someone else must have caught one of these. You lurk around, hoping to spot one of them. A sudden blast of heat grabs your attention. An older man standing next to you screams in pain as he's engulfed in fire from seemingly nowhere. As other people start to panic and help the burn victim, you spot a hooded woman standing in the distance. When she sees you, she starts to run. You can't shake off the feeling that you were the target of the supernatural attack. The hooded woman disappears behind a corner, and when you get there, she's gone, already mixed in with the crowd. In a nearby dumpster, you find the sulfur-stinking hoodie in an envelope containing your photo, plus a curious incantation. The young man has glassy eyes and mumbles his replies as he caresses his catch. The beating movements of his arms disturb you. In the summer of 1971, an entire class trip fell into the sea when a rock they were standing on collapsed. Their bodies were never found until now. Oof. Negative 10 faith. Plus one damage. Plus one strength. You hear that? I just popped the shit out of my shoulder. After a slow interrogation, the young man manages to stutter out something about an organized fishing trip. You only pick up the smallest boxes, but the whole thing takes more time than you expected. Afterwards, Father Yasugi invites you inside for a hot cup, of, cup of hot tea and home-baked cookies. The full moon shines bright in the cloudless night sky. The ink-black ocean waves glimmer eerily. All the residents have drawn their shutters tight and locked their doors. Your footsteps are silent in the sand. The only audible sounds 
or your ragged breathing and pounding heartbeat. You arrive at the water's edge, breathless. The possessed fishermen's boats fill the horizon with their light. Tiny yellow spots navigating across the dark ocean under a dark sky. You cannot make out the figures on the board. It's not the sailors. The black beings must have left their bodies. Shocked, you watch them sail their way out of the harbor. You're terrified at their power, but relieved that they did not drag their meat puppets with them. The black beings never returned, yet mothers would still not let their children play on the beach. Over time, people forgot the last time they saw a boat out on the waves. Although some claim they still see strange beings come into the port at night. Ending A. Crimson Moon spotted over Shiokawa keeps everyone on edge. Alright, I've already read this one. The wooden bat is weaker, but it's faster. Ending A, best possible ending? Ending A is technically the the canon ending but it's not always good you know ending a in one of these things requires you to kill a bunch of people which considering you're a fucking priest should be a big problem all the endings technically give you the same rewards. Hi, baby Tyrion. Blah, 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 blah. All the endings technically give you the same reward, but completing the side mission is how you get the best of the best. Creepy substitute teacher hands you old books to carry. Among the mundane titles, you find one called The Extinction of Mankind. Yeah, the side objectives gives you the plus 15 XP for thorough investigation, but the ending doesn't give you much. Sometimes endings will give you better or different items, but not always. Ah, shit. Cursed signs. Well, I have no intention of casting spells anyway. I should have healed. I really know I should have healed, but... Really, really wanted that.
Oh, I know this. Wait, what? What did I do? Wait, what did I do? Wait, 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 what did I do? I... Oh, I press... I press use instead of... Oh, I meant to equip it. Oh, I meant to equip it. Oh, I meant to equip that. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, I feel like a fucking moron right now. This is a woman. Die! Yeah! Fighting her without doing the ritual sucks. Excuse me, woman. Have another! Take that! Bitch! Uh. Ending A. Minus four doom, 15 XP, because I did it correctly, plus one reason and stamina. The unprecedented Aurora-like event that bathed the entire light. Oh, well, I don't use spells anyway, so I'm fine. Okay, this is gonna be a little rough, but Morbid Mermaid's time. This one's a little fucked up. I... I'm trying to remember. I think to get the Fire Axe, I have to beat this guy in combat. I think. I think. You are correct? Okay. Alright, well, that's what I'm gonna do then. Strength Chad, stay winning. Janitor's mind is snapped, thinking about m uh, mermaids. He's decided it's time to take one of his own, using unfortunate studies as body material. There's one thing everyone at the school is talking about. Another girl from your area has gone missing. Could there be anything connecting all the missing people? You should investigate downtown. We're gonna rest. There. Six, six HP back across the board. Plus four tomb, doom, plus four reason. God damn! I might as well have just rested like six times. What happened to John Faith? Did you get your faith back up? You have to not get hit, which is why his dexterity is so high. But I'm doing a strength... strength priest build, meaning that my... I'm going to get hit no matter what I do. In exchange for dealing fucking insane amounts of damage. He got hit by a microwaved honey bun. Do not throw molten honey buns at your local preacher.
grow my Sunday school plans. Dude, I- they are ramming me with this fucking- I'm getting fucked from behind! Trying to reach me around- Doom! Knowledge check success. Travel to Morbid Pool School. Find a notebook containing handwritten and detailed notes about the swimming club itself and mermaids? A nauseating stench stops you. Someone has scattered rotting fish guts everywhere and hung up countless fish heads. You cover your mouth as you slowly retreat. A vast flock of seagulls outside viciously attack the windows. Whoever the kidnapper may be, they seem to be really obsessed with mermaids. Inside the science lab, you find a plan of the town's sewer system. Someone has marked a path leading from the sea directly to the school building. You're pleasantly surprised to meet your old friend while waiting for a train. She's undoubtedly changed a lot since you've met her. These days, she's moderating a web forum dedicated to the paranormal. There's something wrong here. A weird apathy seems to infect every adult you ask for help. You'll have to deal with it alone. They say a ghost of a heartbroken boy appears on the street at night. Is it just an urban legend or is there some truth? Strength failure. Really? A 12? Jesus Christ! You plan, to you plan to wait the entire night, observing a spot where the supposed ghost would appear, but you fall asleep. You wake up on a cold bench, your entire body aching. You compare the sewer plan with the school map and it suddenly dawns on you. School basement! That must be the place the kidnapper's keeping the missing swimmers! Ugh. I hate that one, because I don't know how to do it. There's no turning back now. God, let's hope she's alright. You bust through the door to the janitorial closet, but it's already too late. The latest missing girl is lying on a dirty mattress, her upper torso at least. A tail of a fish has been crudely sewn to, in place of her legs. She was too weak and died. You hear the mad janitor say. He looks you up and down. But maybe you'll do. Not giving up after the previous failure, the obsessed janitor has found another body to experiment on. You. Wha bam! This enemy is weak. Wha bam! And one more for good measure. Wha bam! Jesus! The mad janitor's body slumps on the floor. You pick up his axe, and using it as a crutch, you try to leave the room. Injured and weakened, you slowly lose consciousness in the school corridor. Police officers find you a few hours later. No trace of the mad janitor is found, but you will sleep a little better knowing tonight that the other students are safe. Ending A. Regain one reason for all failed skill checks. Ooh! You're doomed! Doomed! Damage 6, speed 100, chance to hit 
65. This thing sucks. Wait, no, it doesn't. Oh, oh, dude, it's so much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's way better than the shovel. Oh, yeah, 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 man. The imposing shadow cast by the old lighthouse is getting longer each day. Ooh, that might, that might fuck me up. I'm not doing that great. Contagious coma. I can fuck this guy up real easy. More and more people fall unconscious and cannot be awakened. People who try to wake the patients up only end up falling into a coma themselves. A whole wing of the town's hospital has been dedicated to warding the comatose. Is there anything connecting these people and how did the strange illness start? Let's check the news reports about this weird disease and try to find the cause before more people fall asleep. Sorry to bother you, says one, and they disappear around the corner. As much as I would have loved the two companions, Seven Doom is not worth it. That would have fucking ruined everything. In an otherwise bleak village, the look of the most beautiful flower patch surprises you. It's a guy. Ah! 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 You're either a smart feller or <laughs> nice another shovel. That will come in handy before the fight. Nice. I'll wear that for now, then equip the flashlight later. I have no spells. Allowing yourself a little break, your mind starts to wander. Can God really explain everything that you're experiencing? Dark part of you wonders if the occult you've been fighting can give you the answers you're looking for. As much as I don't want to say what's wrong with doubt and I want to remain faithful, I literally do not have a choice. What if your God isn't the only one that could influence humans? What if there are bigger powers at play here? got their name and address. Let's get out of here. Well, maybe you want to play this game? Spooky. Sure, fuck it. Ooh, success! You can select one injury status and heal it for free. I want my pretty face back. Oh, that's a mutation. That's mental. Yeah, I can't get rid of any of these. Well, I succeeded for no reason.
You can hear a faint sobbing sound coming from an alley nearby. There you approach a man on his knees. When you take a step closer, he suddenly stops and perks up. You can hear the nauseating sound of tearing skin. People hitting fucking hard, man. Have you seen the doctor? He suddenly disappeared, and I'm not sure whether the surgery's over. I seriously missed a 90% chance. That's fucked. Okay. Let's do this. Following the old man's advice, you throw the dust of seeing in the air. It reveals weird elongated monsters hanging from the ceiling. One above every bed. Each creature is connected to a patient with an undulating tendril. As you try to process everything, one of the disgusting creatures raises its head and looks in your direction. I'm gonna lose. That is just too much fucking health, man. That's insane. John Faith! John Faith! John Faith, baby! Woo! Let's hear it for the boys! That is what we like to fucking see! Woo! Heavenly Father, hear my name! Woo! The creature's severed body falls on the floor because he got fucking dumpstered! Fucking dumpstered! We're saving this town. Sorry for the flashbang. Oh, my food's here. Okay, I'll be right back.
This game freaks me out. Like, quite a lot. So... I may have instinctually turned on all my fucking... Um... Lights. In my house. Free dexterity. Yeah, this game freaks me out a little bit. It's a little bit. Not enough charisma. Title of the second mystery. Oh, we did eels, then we did sailors, then we did scissors, then we did morbid. Yeah. No, we did saviors. No. We did eels, then we did sailors. Yeah. That was correct. Fuck you, Takashi! You little bitch! Fuck you! Ninety-five doom, baby. Did you arrive too late, man? Fuck you, stupid ass! Not even close. I did it! No new no achievements. Oh, I got one achievement. Fuck yeah! Right now we're on cultist difficulty. Ah. All right. Miku is another strength character. So let's run her for a little bit. Gotta do as much damage as possible. Oh wait, actually, let me back out real fast. Okay, I did what I wanted. What do different timelines do? Different endings. <clears throat> Raising Doom will increase your stats.
I found out that the vending machine is required for Haru. Like, required. Woza. Yeah, because the vending machine gives cigarettes every single time. Medusa metamorphosis? There's only one ending. I'll learn modeling soon, Swanee. All right, let's relax just a little bit. <coughs> Been streaming for almost two hours. I'm gonna have some of my fries. On the other ending for arms? No, I don't know how to do it. Hey, Shia. Yeah, I'm winning. waffle fries. Really good. Negative 25 faith preacher strength build works every time, <laughs> except when it doesn't.
Negative faith reduces your max HP in exchange for more damage and more stats. My day been good. My day's been very good, actually. Yeah, Requisa won. It's pretty it's pretty funny rage but but you need the the extra bit to make sure everybody's okay with it because there's going to be people that are like oh no <laughs> i'm doing just fine rage good to see you Just enjoying me some food. Haven't eaten much today. Good news. The finals video is done. It's going to be under 40 minutes. I still need to make the animated bit though. Am I going to buy the day before? If it ever comes out, maybe. <clears throat> Sorry, we've been sitting here doing nothing. <clears throat> I don't like to chew it into the mic. I think it's disgusting to chew with your mouth open. And, uh, I'm freaking starving. <laughs> didn't realize how hungry I was.
Pardon me. There we go. Food consumed. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, sorry, I'm a I'm a big <clears throat> proprietor. Of, <coughs> I'm a big proprietor <coughs> of manners and politeness. Not a huge fan of chewing into the mic. I think it's fucking gross. You know what? I've never done this one. Uh, let me re-roll all the new ones. Noisy nails. Medusa. Restless rumors of a residential recluse? What the fuck? Okay, the wordless ward. Peculiar painting. Medusa Metamorphosis. Oh, I got all four of them! Okay, um... Without saying anything or what they're about, what would be a good one to start... Actually, I should probably do School Scissors. Because that'll give me a... That gives me a bat. Should I do the scissors first? Because that will guarantee me a baseball bat. Her strength is pretty good. Let's just do the Medusa one. Mysterious myth of Medusa metamorphosis. Everyone's talking about this weird giant jellyfish of ambushing swimmers. And the local biology teacher can't identify the species as more and more people end up hurt badly. 
You remember from reading an article that a famous marine biologist is spending his vacation in the city. Maybe you should seek help from him. The famous biologist is spending his vacation at the seaside mansion. You need to take a bus there. Charisma is terrible. <laughs> Some scientists say certain Medusas don't age, constantly growing in size. You rummage through your belongings trying to find anything that will help you. You finally pick up guitar. Hopefully it'll be enough. While resting... In regains more reason, but increases doom. Hell yeah! I worked all summer to buy this guitar. I mean, if I could manage it. Oh, I got the foreign cigarettes because of that achievement with Haru. Alright, one more time. Compass. The compass is a clutch is a clutch weapon. It's so good. My Doom is 21, does that mean I get a benefit? Did my strength go up? <clears throat> Failure. All stats improved. Oh. Taking the bus, you can't help but notice the large number of trees that have suddenly died. What could be the cause? Oh, shit. My charisma is not nearly high enough to do this. You're stopped by a woman with a knife. They look incredibly sad. It wants me, but I'm afraid I'm too much of a coward to do it myself. Can you help me? I succeeded! Holy shit! After a long conversation, they hand you the knife and thank you. Oh my god! It scales with knowledge? Based Miku telling people to not kill themselves. Some of the mansions are abandoned, and the roads leading to them are overgrown. You have to somehow find biologists' vacation home. Luck check. You finally enter the right place. Inside there are many jars with various jellyfish species, but where's the biologist himself? Dude, holy shit. Inside a dusty study, you find a map of a cliffside with one point clearly marked. Is this where the biologist is performing his studies?
Dude, fuck me. Standing on the beach, you realize something. The map's coastline doesn't match the actual thing. Why is that? You decide to enter a small shady bar in the docks. Maybe some of the old fishermen can help you in your quest. However, persuading them to do so might prove difficult. No fisherman would refuse a free round to tell you tales of sunken cities inhabited by underwater. Things with too many legs. Tides. The rise and fall of the sea level changes the coastline. You should wait. The low tide reveals a semi-sunken cave which corresponds with the point marked on the map. Reluctantly, you enter into the unknown. The low tide reveals a semi-sunken cave. Is this the place where the biologist is running their experiment? Whatever you decide to do, you should hurry. When the high tide comes, the whole cave will be submerged underwater, potentially trapping you in here. You explore the cave, trying not to slip and fall into the cold water. Hearing some weird noise from behind a corner, you brace yourself. A humanoid creature seems to have no skin. Its black blood courses through yellow veins, and its pale sinew and powerful muscles are visible. It screams and lunges at you. Defend yourself. Waves violently crash against the rocks as the gory be horror begins to circle you. Get fucked! It's only after the meat horror falls to the ground dead that you notice a bag further down the cave. Inside, you find a bunch of neatly folded clothes and a journal. It belongs to the famous marine biologist you were looking for. The last entry dates back to when the jellyfish attack started. The ancient tablet I found when exploring the caves near Shiokawa has, for the lack of a better word, cursed me. I can't explain this, but every other night my skin slips off my body, as if it has a mind of its own. It always returns to me in the morning. I just have to wait in the cave where the tablet was. What is happening to me? What will happen to the giant skin jellyfish without its host's body? You have no idea and hopefully you never learn the answer yourself. Ending A. That's weird, that had nothing to do with the jellyfish, but moving on. His skin is the jellyfish? It's weird. All right. Let's do... Residential Recluse! While you don't get much normalcy in your life these days, today was just supposed to be that. You've been planning to take today to distress before your next investigation. Instead, you awoke to find yourself trapped inside your own apartment. The walls have grown over the door and windows, leaving no exit. Looking through the peephole, you yell and call out to passing neighbors, but your cries fall on deaf ears. Who could have done this to you? More importantly, how are you going to get out of here? The windows are covered in a thick layer of drywall, leaving only shallow cavities. The front door isn't much better. 
But there must be some way out. Yeah, this definitely feels like a Silent Hill 4 thing. I'm going to assume that the only buttons I have access to are navigating my apartment and wasting another day. And since navigating to the main room didn't seem to do anything... This is one of those situations where you might have to click on everything, you think? Okay. As you prepare a bath, you think about all the possible leads so far. NXP. You spend all of your time searching your apartment for a way out, but you're already getting exhausted. Wallpaper and paint have spread around the door's edges. No matter how hard you try, the door refuses to budge. Y'all, I'm clicking on everything. Oh, here it is. At least he can't get through either. That's someone with a weapon? Oh, God, that scared the fuck out of me. Sorry, I didn't notice that these buttons change. That's on me. Sorry. Loud knocking wakes you up in the middle of the night. Open up, shouts the deep voice from behind the door. I know you're there. Dexterity check success. Your sleep schedule's starting to drift. The hours just seem to slip past you and the day is over before you know it. There's this visionette around shit now. It's a weird drawing stuck to your door. I clearly understand what I'm supposed to be doing, but... Okay, I'm gonna assume that I still can't do anything. You've read all your books and watched all your VHS tapes three times over. God, you miss people. You don't see anything of interest in the hallway today. Except the guy standing outside of it. You still change clothes every day, but is there any point if you're not going outside?
Your pantry is starting to run out of easy meals and you don't have the energy to cook. Try running through the window? You can't run through the window, they're covered in drywall. Sitting on the sofa, you find yourself repeatedly checking the time to get some grounding. When you go to eat though, you realize the clock in the kitchen displays a different time and your bedroom alarm clock is completely different from each of the others. You're sure there's some explanation, you shrug it off and get your food. You pretend you're not nauseous when the clocks later show negative numbers, jumble words, and nothing at all. You're running out of ways to keep yourself busy. The boredom makes you want to beat your head against the wall. You wonder just how much things are changing out there without you around. If nothing else, you're at least safer in here than out there. You can't see outside anymore. You still change clothes every day, but is there any point if you're not going outside? Just standing in here makes you lightheaded. The bed is too tempting. You shouldn't stay long. Something guides your hand. What is this? When you go to use the bathroom, you notice there's a clump of hair coming up the sink drain. You're certain that it's not yours. There's a startling amount of resistance when you pull. Before you can react, the hair is suddenly yanked down the drain and out of sight. Your mind is hazy. It's all blurring together. You just want to sleep. You're beginning to doubt this door will ever open again. Maybe it's better that way. What were you doing again? The apartment cradles you gently in your sleep every night, keeping you warm within her ribcage. You don't have much of an appetite. <clears throat> Something guides your hand. What is this? I used to live here too. This was the only place that was... Good? All I could do was stay in, eat, and sleep. And when the food ran out, just sleep. When someone eventually came for my corpse, I'd already made my way inside. You moved it. I can't tell you how happy being with you has made me. Please don't worry, I will keep you safe, I promise. Oh, son of a bitch! Oh, that's weird! Oh, uh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that at all. Uh, it just gave me bad goosebumps. Blah. Blah. Hold on. Okay. We're loaded. No strangers. Blah 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 blah. Waste another day.
You stop by home to pick up your lunch. You find a pile of letters in your mailbox. Oh man. There's no music. Wait, there is some music. Approach the wall. As you get closer, you notice thin cracks in the wall above the bed. Something dark, glistening, red pulsates inside. The cracks move like lips, and the apartment whispers to you. Just lay down. You hear wooden support beams creak as the walls flex, reaching towards you from all sides. And let me take care of you. We can sacrifice the toy or prepare for combat. Well, we are strength chads today. The wall opens even further, deeper. A girl lies curled up inside of the apartment's womb. Just want you to be safe here. What did I do? Why won't you just stay? Um... This is bad. Okay, four times four... Sixteen. Three times four is twelve. So I'll die from that, and I won't do enough, and I have no money either. I could try to do a clap and bow thing, but I'm just gonna die from it. I have four chances to get this right. There's three claps and two bows. girl's face twids, twists oddly. The apartment's pulsing innards slow to a still. The girl's mouths, the girl mouths something you can't make out. She smiles. You fall unconscious. When you awaken, you're laying in the apartment entryway, besides the open door. The next morning, you see a silhouette on the balcony, staring out at Shiokawa and watching the sunrise. You blink, and she's gone. After that, you never see her again, and after that, your apartment becomes just an apartment. Ending A. Woo. More doom. Inside your mailbox, you find a small key. 
Dude, I would not go back to this apartment for so long, man. I don't know if you could get me to go back to my fucking apartment if I knew somebody was living in it. I have a big... Like, I, I'm scared of, of three things. Two of them everybody should already know. I don't like sharks. I, I, I don't care if they're friendly. I don't care if they're nice. I don't care. I don't like sharks. I never have. It's just a, it's just a me thing. I just don't like sharks. Two, don't like spiders. Spiders are, you know, they're, they're, they're spiders. Some of them actually are pretty lethal. And the fact that they can be so small and take down anything that they bite into is kind of insane. Number three is violation of my home. I do not like strangers, uh, burglars, thieves, people that are inside of my safety home, the safetiness of my home without my knowledge or my approval. I, I hate that. I cannot stand it. If anyone is in my house and they're there to do harm or live there with like a home intruder of some kind. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, dude. I, I don't like it. I hate it. Your home is supposed to be your castle. It's your safety net. And if it gets violated, g gun. Worrying right up of a wordless ward. You've got a call from your classmate's mother. With a teary voice, she told you your friend has a nasty accident and is currently awaiting an important surgery. They asked her to call you and request you spend a few evenings with them. That's weird. You haven't exactly had the closest relationship lately, but you agree to visit your friends starting tonight. Oh, it's another fucking sit- FIVE NIGHTS AT Freddy. Your classmate is at the hospital, awaiting the surgery. Go and visit them. I don't have any money, I don't know why I did that, that was a waste. Ugh. Many sick people are waiting to be examined by the overworked hospital and staff. You don't like the nurse's weird smile. Patients waiting for a special surgery? Take the elevator in the corridor. You enter the hospital looking for information about a certain patient. The main corridor is dark and strangely empty. You spot a nurse at the registration booth. She's asleep from exhaustion. You manage to sneak past her and rummage through the cabinet. Finally, you locate the information you were looking for. The patients here are getting restless. What's wrong with this place? Your friend is lying on the bed, still sleeping after the surgery. Their face is almost completely covered in bandages. You sit on what, me what must be the most uncomfortable chair in the world, thinking how pointless it is to wait here, having nothing else to do or having nothing else to do, you decide to go and buy something to drink from the vending machine. Buh. The next day passes without an incident, and before you know it, another evening has come. With an increasing reluctance, you head towards the hospital. While taking an elevator, you get a terrible feeling as something bad's about to happen. Elevator doors open, revealing a black mass of eyes and teeth pouring into the elevator, biting and suffocating you. Later, you wake up in a doctor's office. A nurse discovered you lying unconscious in the elevator. Ugh. 
Your friend woke up earlier today. You've spent some time talking about school and recent events, but still can't shake the feeling something about them seems off. Finally, they go to sleep. You decide to take a walk to stretch your legs. Bleh. Next day on your way home, you're stopped by your friend's mother. She hands you a package for her friend. You promise to hand it over tonight. You shouldn't open it now. Am I just playing with a revolver? Yeah, I have my, um... I never... It's a Smith & Wesson. It's a it's a snub nose. Uh... Caliber is this? That looks like a 44. It's a snub nose 44 that's a cop gun I like to mess around with. I've never fired it, and I don't really have an intention of ever firing it, considering Magnum rounds are so expensive these days. But... It makes me feel good, you know? I'm not pointing it at anybody. I've never fired it at anybody. And I think the only ammo I have with this is in my closet, which is on the other side of my room. So... It just makes me feel safe, you know? It's nice. Hey, your mom asked me to bring you this package, you say, handing over the parcel. When asked what's inside, they just stare at you. They performed countless dissections to find the answer. Instead, they found it. Bah! Is this a ghost? Oh, son of a bitch. No, I'm not doing this. I'm out of here. I'm not gonna... Dom like completely annihilate all my fucking health for that. You already got the order? I don't know how any of that stuff works. Some guy slams his shoulder against you as he walks past, nearly knocking you to the ground. You whirl around and let out a fur furious HEY! Catching the attention of a man, of the man and a few other passerby. He stares back at you, his eyes dull behind his thick glasses and his jaw slack and drooling. What's with this guy? Your enraged expression falters when you realize something's seriously up with this guy. He suddenly lurches forward, crumpling like a puppet with its strings cut. A weird symbol glows on his forehead, and you hear screams from the bystanders as he begins to melt. Good god, do you think you're gonna be sick? The clap and bow order stays the same for the run? I didn't know that. Oh, you know what I just realized? Here, hold on. I have a, uh... <clears throat> I have, like, a bunch of fans in my room, and I forgot to turn it off. Now that it's off, my mic quality should be much better. Your friend just keeps staring at you. Did I tell you you're really beautiful? They ask, twisting their swollen lips into a smile. <sighs> Don't go yet! Well, that spooked me. Bah. The next day passes without any incident. With an increasing reluctance, you head towards the hospital. final phase of my surgeries tomorrow. I just can't wait to show you the results. You can't help but shudder thinking about the final day. Sorry, woman, I can't donate any of my shit. This is it. Finally, it's the last night you have to spend with them.
Suddenly, all the lights in the hospital go out. With a bad feeling in your gut, you decide to check on your friend one last time and get the hell out of here. You're shocked to find an empty bed. The parcel you've delivered lies unwrapped on the nightstand. Ignoring the faint footsteps from the corridor, you take a peek. Inside, there's a torn price tag for a butcher's knife. The footsteps are getting louder. Do you like what I did with my face? I've always admired you, you know. Even when you acted like you didn't know me. I think the result is perfect. Too perfect, in fact. For two people to share the same face. Your friend raises the butcher's knife you involuntarily brought. Oh, shit! It's Miku. So, I have a choice here. I can spend my two... I can do this. Guarantee, um... I can guarantee seven damage and risk... What's the chance to hit? Oh, it's really low. I could risk it. And if I miss even one time, I lose. There's a special action. You close your eyes, fighting the increased, increasing dizziness. That doesn't seem like a good idea. That seems like a bad idea. If I miss... <sighs> if I miss, I die. The person who tried to steal your life now lies on the hospital floor, dead, maddened. You keep smashing their face until it only it's only a gory mess. When you come back to your senses, you stumble out of the hospital room and into the dark corridor. The doors to other rooms slowly begin to open, and you are reminded about wh what the crazed friend told the other patients about you. Out of every room stretches the bandaged head of a patient, their bruised head, bruised face is eerily similar. They all want to meet you. Rewards for solving the mystery. I'm guessing that is not the correct way to do it because... I didn't even get like an ending number. Oh, 
When will the Adam's Mom Cup be back in stop? It's never coming back. Don't give the package next time? Okay. Next time. Well, you know what we got out of there? Just... just peachy. Peculiar painting. Alright. Are the other two endings to this... Like, what are the other two endings to Scory Story of School Scissors? Because I... I have... I'm assuming one of them is beat her by doing the... The ritual incorrectly like I don't I don't know yeah one of them being timeline specific I understand but I don't know what the other one is yeah D is brute force okay well, I don't have enough health for that shit, so I'm not gonna fight her. Let's do Peculiar Painting. Per perilous Parable of the Peculiar Painting. A damp-looking letter addressed to you arrived this morning. Mamiya Ichiro, a famous painter you were once a huge fan of, has replied to a message you sent him last summer. He thanked you for the letter and invited you to his mansion. You were going to witness the creation of his true masterpiece. Just how could you decline? Son of a bitch! I need to rest, I can't keep doing these missions. You're afraid you'll never be able to remove the lingering musty smell of wetlands from your clothes. Now where is everyone? You continue your search. Ooh. While walking through the empty mansion, you can hear something rustling in the bushes behind the building. Oh. Just don't, don't frostbite, don't frostbite. Yes! That was not worth it. You hear the sound of glass breaking somewhere in the mansion. Walking through the forest, you spot a pair of legs sticking out of a bush. Before you can do anything, however, they twitch and move. Oh, that's... Buh. Get fucked. There are countless paintings hung on the walls of this mansion. All of them show alien landscapes and weird humanoids dancing around in circles. You don't recognize any of them, but the technique used is unmistakable. 
Ichiro-san painted these. You feel watched. You head towards the private rooms, hoping to find a paint to find the painter himself. Master spiritual actions. Uh, nice, but I don't have any. Whoa, shit! Every visible surface of the room you enter is covered in obscene paintings and grotesque monster faces. In the middle of the room, you spot Ichiro-san, repeatedly stabbing Aimi and splattering her blood over an empty canvas. Ichiro-san smiles when he notices you. Ah, my biggest fan. I can't let you know my secret. The mad painter slowly takes off his dark glasses. Oh, shit. It did one more point of damage. I have to dodge this move. We're good. We're eating good tonight. We win. Say goodbye, fuck nugget. As you rush to save Amy, you notice something terrifying. All the grotesque painted monsters begin to leave their canvases. You can't do anything but stare as they grab both corpses and begin devouring them. In a last-ditch attempt, you knock over a lamp, setting the room on fire. Ichiro-san's greatest creations must never see the light of day. Painting his greatest work destroyed. I have no idea how many fucking endings there are to, to that one. Local scientists are baffled. Holy shit. I can't believe there's almost 500 people here. I didn't think I was doing that good of a job reading, you know? <laughs> I need to put away this guitar. I can't, I can't rest like that. Another fucking situation where I cannot rest. I have to beat this on seven fucking health. Oh, no. Okay, is the wooden bat better than the hammer? Uh... The wooden bat is slower. It has a much easier chance of hitting. Maybe I should just use... They both do the exact same damage. I think I'm gonna stick with the hammer. Square. Okay. I fucking hate that one. Ritsuko Chen was the most promising athlete in her school. When she suddenly disappeared, the case was quickly closed without any suspects. Today, she finally dug herself out.
20 XP and curse. That's fine. Nice, I level up. As much as I want to heal, I think doing more damage will save me here. If I fail because of that mix-up, it'll be my fault, and I'll be okay with it. All I have to do is simply be better. Nothing a good old-fashioned hammer can't fix. Son of a bitch! Wait a minute. This will guarantee me safety. Guarantee safety. Boom. <laughs> and now I'm about to hit him with a wind up! Boom! Get the fuck out of here! It's just that shrimple, ladies and gentlemen. We're back, baby. We're so back. We're so back. We're so back, baby. All right. Okay. Let's get out there. Okay, I have to prep for Takeshi-san. San. So... I can only rest up to... That should be enough. Nice! My knowledge check passed! I've never done that! You're about to grab the rods when you notice the dials and buttons. You toy with them for a bit before adjusting both voltage and current so it's safe for you to grab them. You were stopped by a girl. Wearing a dirty black uniform. Sorry, but I can't let you go any further. I have seven charisma. It's not enough. Light your way, baby! Someone's been taking photos focused on you. Select the second enemy you fought this run.
The very first enemy I fought was Meat Horror. And then I did the Recluse. Wouldn't it be the roommate? Nice. And get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Back from the brink of fucking death, baby! It was too fucking easy! What the hell? What am I looking at? Oh, wait, because she's not a part of the friend group. She's a unique character. Oh, from the freaking brink, baby. From the brink. Strength build sweep. Oh, that's three victories in a row. Oh, my God. Oh. Son of a bitch. Oh, man. Oh, uh. 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 baby. The next strength option is going to be the weird girl. <sighs> I did one on skeptic. I did one on initiate. I did one on cultist. It's time to bump it up to true believer. I really don't want to, but it's time to do it. <gasps> Yumiko Ichimura. Strength that starts with her lucky baseball bat. It's time for True Believer. I have no money, and I have my max stamina is 13, and my max reason is 13. The chances of my success are going to be very, very low. Oh boy. Strength Chads, unite! Zektast, the horror from the stars. A meteorite fell down on a village, on a field in a village near Shiokawa. The farmer who found it contacted researchers from Tokyo, but when they arrived, all they found was a wet puddle of pinkish goo. Every 21% of Doom characters were- HOLY SHIT! I just want devouring fire, man. I know your secret, you rat fuck. She starts off with a concussion, so she has negative one to knowledge. Lucky Bat. It's faster and hits just as hard and a higher chance to hit with plus two luck that's better than the hammer. What's this bitch's secret? Do you want me to tell you the secret, or do you want to figure it out? Because... Hey, I I'll tell you it right now. I'll tell you her secret. I know exactly what it is. And it's kind of fucked up. Here, I'll just do a vote. I think having a vending machine would be a good idea. I've never done the occult shot, but I don't really care for it. I actually never used the police station, so I'm just gonna do the vending machine. Okay, so here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, here, here's what I'll do. 
for the people that don't want a spoiler, okay? So here's what I'll do. When I turn off, I'm gonna give you a countdown. I'm gonna turn off, not the stream, but like, I'll do this. Like, you won't be able to see anything. You can, you can tune back in when you can see it back on the stream if you don't want to hear anything, okay? Okay. Three. Two. One. Mute if you don't want to hear the spoiler, okay? Uh, what's her name? It, Yumikara? Whatever her fucking name is. It's actually... Her backstory says that... Uh, she's looking for her twin brother. And she'll find him at any cost. She has two events where she's scared to look over where she knows a dead body will be. Because she'll know... She knows that, that she killed someone there. And she has an event where she... Uh, cut her hair because she was trying to trick someone. She's not Yumikara. She is the twin brother that killed her sister, his sister, and he took her place because she was popular and he wasn't. Yumikara is not a girl. He's a guy pretending to be a girl. I know it's weird. Hey, remember, don't spoil it in chat or nothing. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> it's Japan. I'm used to it. Wood. Didn't somebody say that there is an item in the peculiar painting that I missed? Oh yeah, I fucked up. Like, I didn't even get the best ending. In order to prevent my death, I should probably get evolving eels. Oh, we got that event. It's a unique event to Yumikara, whatever her name is. The investigation leads you to the edge of a cliff, the same cliff where you... Never mind. You must focus on the case and saving the town. Involuntarily, you glance down, expecting to find the half-rotten corpse of a popular girl, adored by everyone. Instead, all you can see are the waves crashing violently against the cliff. God, what's happening to you? They will find her one day. Yeah, my charisma's in the dog water. Because Yumikara's five across the board. I have a shitty moral compass, wood smash. Compass! Let's go. That was a good find. Only thing better would be a f well, actually, flashlight's okay, but... Suddenly it got all cold in the corridor. As you turn to leave, you're stopped by a man with unnaturally pale skin and giant lips. He kisses the air and takes a step closer. Um, 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 uh, 
How you doing, sweetums? Fuck, I missed! Kana was right. Someone tried to burn some papers. Ah, fuck. God damn it, that's bad. That'd be cool suits, but uh, I'm not going to go to any event like that. Oh my god, I was so worried. Nice. Okay, make sure to look away. Three, two, one. Oh. The run's over. No, never mind. They, I'm, we're still good. We're still good. This is unbelievably bad. But, we're okay. For now. Maybe not for long. Bad encounters. Except for household hell if I get the bad ending. What weapon is in the peculiar painting? It says it's in the work the shed. If I do that, I won't be able to heal. Let's do coma. Let's call it a feature. Oh, 
Oh, that was a strength check? I got branded like a whore. Hearing footsteps behind you, you realize you aren't the only student here. A girl wearing a demon mask starts giggling as she gets closer. I didn't take fucking random damage from that. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you. <laughs> that bitch thought she was part of the payday crew. No spells. Sheesh. Have to do this fight like this. Costs three reason but deals 15 damage. Because it will kill. Oh, geez. just gotten the bad ending. I, I, I always forget that I'm I'm allowed to do the bad ending.
How am I alive? You're kidding me. Okay, there we go. Next time I can just go for the bad ending. <laughs> Let's go back to Haru so we can just beat the shit out of people, because I know he's got a shitload of really, really good stuff. is a medical girl, but she does something. Something about an experiment? That's her challenge? Like, yeah, it's her challenge, but doesn't it have something to... Doesn't she? She's a doctor. She's got like some doctor stuff going on. Oh, she's a med student. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's the job up here. I never even saw that. been three hours um i've eaten i think i've had the fun that i can have right now i think i'm good yeah i think i think i'm i'm good I think tomorrow I'm gonna get started on the finals stuff, but uh, you know, three strength build runs that ended in victory. That's that's pretty good. That makes me pretty happy. So I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna turn on a lot of lights in my house, and I'm gonna take me a nice bath with a 45 ready and safety off. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. And have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you tomorrow for Thanksgiving Eve. And then, um, on Thursday, you guys just have a good Thanksgiving. <laughs>